Hey, Peace World, thanks for pressing play on another Pay Me No Mind sports and entertainment video. A little update. Uh, I usually talk, I talk a lot of boxing on here, so it was pretty dope seeing the grand arrivals yesterday for Saturday's uh, heavyweight championship pay-per-view fight. Uh, the joint Fox and ESPN um, uh, pr production event. So uh, it was cool seeing those guys, Tyson Fury and uh, WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder walking through the crowd and being well received by the crowd in the turnout. But we are talking about Dayton Flyers basketball. That's the number five team in the country. 66-61 um, against the VCU Rams. I thought this was a pretty solid win. It was marred by uh, sketchy ball handling and passing all night long for the Flyers who didn't, they didn't reach their, I mean, they were well below their uh, field goal percentage for the year, which is about 52%. They were down at 45 last night. Didn't shoot it all that well from beyond the arc. Um, and they didn't win by the, the gap, uh, the, uh, the margin that they've uh, held all year. And they were held well below their scoring average of uh, about 82 points per game with the 66. Um, so, yeah, a tough night. A tough night. But they got it done. And that's the most important thing. Slow start for Obi Toppin. Only three points in the first half. They still led uh, by seven points. Uh, what was it? Uh, 30... 36-29. I am sorry. Yeah, so still, uh, and Obi, you know, he didn't, um, he came right out and got the first three. That's And that's one thing that I like that stayed consistent. They put pressure on teams because they come out and they jump out to these to these decent leads. They were up 6-0 after three-pointers by Mike Sell. It was good to see him get start early and uh, Obi. Uh, and then you knew it was going to be a game because VCU comes back and goes on a 7-0 run themselves, and you see the Flyers down a point. Uh, Crutcher comes in and gets the play of the game with the, 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 uh, the fast break dunk. You know, him being at 6-1, rocks the rim, gets the, uh, the nice dunk. It really wasn't a, a big energy boost, you know, for the team in some respects. But, um, yeah. Like I said, slow half for uh, Toppin. Um, only three points. He comes back and gets the other, another, you know, another nine in the second half. They go to him for key baskets, a little bit of isolation game or post up, and he came through. He had. I don't think he finished. Uh, I think he missed a couple of and ones. He gets three blocks on the night, uh, five rebounds. Still impacts the game, you know, in multiple ways. Uh, Crutcher led the way with eighteen. Mike Sale almost got into double digits. He had nine. I believe Landers finished with about 10. Not a great game for Chapman. He hit a, a three-pointer in the first earlier in the first half, and that was pretty much it for him offensively. Um, I thought Co uh, Cohill had a number of timely plays, at least two uh, key defensive rebounds, one coming later in the game on a long, uh, a long rebound that would have given – VCU a second shot when they were only down three or four. Uh, Highland led the way for them with 18. They also had three starters in double digits. Um, but, uh, you know, they just, they couldn't get the, the, the right, they couldn't get that right stop in that bucket after the stop. Uh, I know they were as close as 29 to 28 at one point in the first half. Uh, they knocked down two threes in a row. Um, Cole Hill knocked down a three to make it 49-42. Uh, what else in here? Uh, it, it was close as 52-50. to 50. So, like I said, there were some times in here where the, the Flyers were really facing some adversity. And they I, I didn't see him flinch. I didn't see him panic. Uh, you know, Toppin, even though he didn't have the great offensive game, he never – I never saw him hang his head. Um uh, Santos Silva became a little bit of a problem inside. He finished with 12. Toppin was even blocked a couple of times this game. You don't really see that. Uh, one thing that I did want to mention, 
you know, they called that uh that kickball. The, the the ref on the baseline called that kickball. There clearly wasn't a kick a kickball. And uh the referee up at half court, I don't know what he was looking at, but he didn't overrule it. Uh that let it that was at 61 55, and then that was a crucial moment because on the next play, Santos Silva, a 55% field uh free throw shooter, he knocks down a pair of free throws to make it 61 57. On a, you know, on free throws that they really shouldn't have had. Then they come back, Santos Silva looks like they get the three or four offensive rebounds or tips. Um you know, to make it 62-59 at 27.2 seconds. Uh, they said it was Santos Silva. Then I think the, the ref might have came back and credited to the Williams kid. Uh, Cohill, again, shows up, gets the uh, the two free throws, knocks both of those down. And then that's at the 22.4 uh, seconds to go. Then he comes in and gets that defensive rebound that I was talking about right after that. Uh, Crutcher also goes down and knocks down a pair of free throws solid from the line to make it 66-59. And then after that, uh, that was with eight seconds left. And VCU goes down and gets that garbage bucket to make it 66-61. Uh, the Flyers moved to 24-2. and Fifth ranked, as I mentioned earlier. 13-0 uh, in the Atlantic 10. And... Um, like I said, not the, the greatest game. You know, the offensive efficiency, all of that stuff was thrown out the window last night. Uh, but it still looks – I love the way that they competed. Um, you know, Mike Sell, like I said, gets, getting him getting up around nine points, almost getting into double digits. Um, Matt Toast. Shimanga was a bit of a disappointment. He had his, his, his dunk blocked. On a good assist, I can't remember who threw the assist, but um, he's a guy I'm arguing and lobbying for to get more minutes going into the tournament, thinking that he might need to be a bigger factor. And he got blocked by uh, a six foot seven guy. I believe that was Santos Silva that wedged it up there. Another thing, scouting report thought. Toppin is going to have to. I don't know if he's going to work on, get, you know, get his ball handling together, uh, you know, this year, but definitely moving towards the pros, he, you know, backing guys in from uh, 20 feet away from the rim. That's not going to get it. Uh, you got to be able to handle the ball, you know, f facing up from out there, getting around guys, uh, step backs and, and whatnot. It, it, it holds the ball too long. And with your back to everybody, it allows guys, especially in the play, in the tournament, it will allow guys offside, weak side defenders to come around and knock the ball away or for teams to draw charges on you and whatnot. Another scouting, po uh, scouting report issue. Somebody on the team is going to have to learn to take the step back jump shot in the lane, the mid-range shot. Uh, it was a couple times, <clears throat> maybe E.B. Watson, he had a pretty decent game. Uh, I think seven points and was really aggressive, had a lot of assists. Uh, I think five assists maybe, but you know, a, a solid game for him off of the bench, but those guys are coming in there drawing those charges. And I, I would think that at some point in time, teams are going to recognize, you know, the flyers, they don't step back and accept the jump shot. They want to get all the way to the rim. So we might as well get outside of that circle and draw the charge on them and force the referees to get involved. Uh, again, it's an easy shot. You don't have to get to the rim. You make the hard drive, step back, get some clearance, and then shoot a short shot. Um, it seems like last night, at least two guys, may, Crutcher, I think, had one. Cohill might have had one. But, uh, yeah, just step back and work the mid-range J. And get the easy, get a high percentage shot versus, uh, you know, trying to get it too far inside, <clears throat> drawing a charge, stopping the, or, or getting the charge drawn on you, stopping the clock, and then, you know, getting into the penalties, letting the team score with the, uh, the clock stopped and whatnot. So step back, shoot that comfortable shot. Everybody on the team, um, you know, shoots it pretty well. So if you're shooting from that close, it's, it's like I said, it's a high percentage field goal. So anyway, 66-61, they're back in action Saturday against the Duquesne Dukes at uh, UD Arena. Like I always say on 
pay me no mind. You don't have to be great, but you have to, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Again, my name is Wood. Please consider subscribing to the channel. If you like any of the breakdown, please hit that like button. Tell somebody to tell somebody. I'm out. One, have a great day.